so yes, of course, yes. As I said, I was a fashion editor for Metro newspaper. What's interesting um, about this talk, it was developed um, uh, about one year ago. I started to think I really, really need to reach people outside XR circles out. I, I need to get to, to younger people as they're coming into um, you know, mass consumptions. My daughter is my daughter is eleven, and I can see she's edging closer to that world as her friends start sharing TikTok videos and and start liking um, uh, uh, people from the music scene. Um, so originally, this was, uh, and it still is going to be delivered in state schools for free uh, because I want the information to get to as many people as possible. Um, I was thirteen years at Metro, during which time I produced pages a lot like this. I was really trying to capture sort of the fabulousness of, of fashion, the creativeness of fashion, um, you know, because it is. Uh, an incredibly powerful mode of expression. No one is going to deny that. Fashion has been used through the ages to express our affinity to tribes, to express our community, to express our individuality. Uh, we have a little bit of a problem, which I was going to spend quite a lot of this uh, talk talking about, but it is now one of the major industries on the planet. Um, it's three billion, uh, three trillion, sorry, dollar global sector. It hires up to 75 million people worldwide. Some of the richest and uh, most powerful companies in the world are related to fashion. And using the word richest, some of the richest men normally um, are at the head of fashion companies. So it's a really, really powerful force in society. And I got to do this amazing job putting these things together. Look at that, look at that. Um, I got to interview people like Valentina and amazing, amazing. And the page on the right is something that I'm going to come back to. It was a page that was developed by the editor at a time when uh, more and more people seem to want to see the fashion staff behind the fashion pages. Um, I think um, the Guardian fashion editor still does this. She pops this up in the, in the newspaper. It's a way of um, humanizing um, the face behind the editorial. And so once a month, I would get into the studio with my stylist and we would start to develop these pages where I would be dressed up. Um, and I would try and write a little piece about why pastels were different this season. Um, not always easy because, of course, pastels come around every three or four years. And it's, you know, when you're in the fashion industry writing about this stuff for 13 years, it starts to become quite tricky to say anything new at all. Um, you can hear I'm quite cutting about fashion. There's a reason for that. Um, OK, so I like to show these pictures in secondary schools. The reason is they look up at the massive screen, me looking amazing. And they look down at the real person and they go, there's a bit of a gap in the image here. <laughs> and I really, <laughs> I make the most of that because what I'm trying to do when I show young students these pictures is say to them, I spent at least two hours in makeup, um, one hour probably for hair, the floor of the studio was covered in clothing. So there, I mean, for one shot where I look good, there must have been 50 where I looked a bit rough. At the end of the process, the photographer would take away the images and he would still have to retouch them, despite the fact that I had makeup, the layer of a cake on my face. Um, and uh, he would smooth out uh, my hair if it was not blow dried straight enough. He would take out eye bags, which no amount of eye concealer could ever seem to remove. Um, and the other thing is one day I said to him, Philip, I think you've made my legs longer. And he had. So this was despite the fact I seemed to be wearing six inch heels, which I couldn't walk in. Um, and then he, he still had to do it. And all of this was about manipulation of an image of a person to fit in with ideas of beauty as put forward by the fashion industry. And it's one of the aspects of fashion that I want to talk about. It's um, how it constantly thrives and profits off presenting ideals that not a single one of us can live up to. And if someone did live up to those ideals, they'd probably be quite an odd looking person, to be honest.